In this video, I'm going to cover how you can create your own custom exception classes and why you would actually want to do that instead of just relying on the built-in exception classes that Python offers. Exceptions in Python are a way to handle errors or unexpected behavior in your code. And exceptions are a really helpful tool next to, of course, making sure that your code is high quality and robust. If you want to learn how to detect problems in your code faster, check out my free workshop on code diagnosis. This is about 30 minutes, contains a ton of practical advice and code examples that you can apply right away to your own project. Go to arion.co slash diagnosis to enroll. The link is also in the description of this video. Exception-based error handling is quite common in many programming languages, though different languages do this in different ways. For example, Java allows you to throw any type of object as an exception, whereas Python relies more on a structured hierarchy of exceptions. So the top of that hierarchy is the base exception class. If you want to build custom exception classes, then you need to create a subclass of exception or one of its other subclasses. Here I have a simple example of a person class. Person has a name and an age. There's an age property that returns the age and we have an age setter. And in this case, we have an exception if you try to set a negative value because of course people can't have negative ages. And then in the main function, I have a try accept block. So we create a person, we set the age to minus 10 and then we print the name. And then what we do is that we catch the value error in this case, if we try to set the age to minus 10. Now, of course, you never would explicitly do this in code, but you can imagine that this is part of a command line interface and a user might type a negative number and that means you need to handle the error. Raising an error in Python is really easy. You just use the raise keyword and then you specify the type of error that you're going to raise. In this case, we raise a value error, which is a built-in error type in Python. And we catch the error by using the accept clause. So what will happen here is that this runs and then in the main function, because this code is part of try, then if there is a value error here, then this accept clause is going to catch that and then run this code. So when we run this, you see that we get an error that age cannot be negative, and that comes exactly from raising this value error right here. Now, Python has quite a few different error types like value error, but they can be a bit generic and cryptic to the end user if you use them. So instead of that, you can also use a custom exception type. Here's an example of what that might look like. So I have a container class, and the container has a limit and a current weight and we can load items on it. And we have to respect the limit that this container can support. And if the new weight that we compute by loading an item onto the container exceeds the limit, then we are going to raise a weight limit exceeded error. So that's a custom exception type that we've defined here. So you see, we created a subclass of the exception class and they added an initializer where we can then specify extra information such as what is the limit that we're not allowed to exceed and what is the current value. And then we store that in the exception object. So this is one of the nice things about using custom exceptions that you can actually pass data to them and then use that data in another place in your code. So here we use it to construct the message but you don't need to do that. You can also, when you catch the exception, then do something with these values. Here's another example of a type of error that a container can raise. So if the weight is less than zero, so of course, when we load an item onto the container, it can be a negative weight, then it's going to raise a weight negative error. And there also we pass an argument, which is that the weight that was passed to the function. And the way I set up this weight negative error exception class is slightly different from weight limit exceeded error, just to show you the difference. Here I'm calling the initializer of the super class. In this case, I'm not doing that and I'm simply setting the message directly. Now, this is a bit easier to read, in my opinion, but at the same time, you might not properly initialize the super class this way, so it might lead to unexpected behavior. So from a readability perspective, I think this is better, but in order to do it properly, this is probably what you should do to set the message. Now. There's four keywords that are important when you're dealing with exception, which is raise. To raise an error, we have try, which tries to execute code in a block. We have accept, that allows to handle particular types of exceptions. And we have finally, which is code that is run after the try block in all cases, whether there's an exception or not. In this example, we have a file variable. So we open data.txt, doesn't really matter what's in there, but that can potentially 
raise an IO error if there is some issue with reading the file. And if that happens, of course, we want to handle that exception. And then this is what it's going to print. Then we have an else block, which is also something that you can do as part of the exception handling framework in Python. And this is run when there is no exception. So we try this. If there's an exception, then we do that. Else, we do that. And the finally block is called in all cases. So it doesn't matter if there's an exception or not, finally is always called. So in summary, try means we try to run this code, except is going to be called if there is an exception, else is going to be called if there is no exception, and finally is called regardless of whether there's an exception or not. So that gives you quite a bit of flexibility in terms of control flow. Now, exception handling, though very commonly used, is just one way of dealing with errors. Languages like Rust use something else, namely monadic error handling. If you want to learn more about monads and how monadic error handling works, check out this video next where I explain exactly what that is and how you can use that. Thanks for watching and see you soon.